The relationship between Pamela Carter and her father, Joe Carter, was an especially strong one. My dad was a really good dad. He was a great dad. You couldn't get a better dad. For Pamela, he was more than just a parent. He was a friend, and she could always count on him being there for her. Sadly, in 1992, Pamela's father was killed in a tragic accident, but even this sudden tragedy could not sever their bond. My dad's always with me, no matter what. Always. Anything I do, anything I think, my dad's always there. And several years after his death, Pamela would discover how close her father remained as he watched over her during a terrifying ordeal. It happened uh, the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, that night at 8 p.m. I was driving down the road. I'd worked real hard that whole week trying to catch up because we were going to miss a few days. But once on the road, her eyes grew heavy, and suddenly, she was asleep at the wheel. As the car careened down the hill, Pam's body was thrown violently from the vehicle, landing in front of it as the car came crashing down on top of her. She was now pinned under a thousand pounds of twisted steel, alive but unable to move. Pam struggled to free herself from the weight of the car. I tried right at first to just push myself slide out, you know, and I realized I couldn't. And then I tried the underpinning, lifting it up. I thought maybe if I could just lift that up, then I could slide out. So I kept pulling on it, and it wouldn't go nowhere. Using a small branch she found nearby, Pamela tried to dig herself out from under the car, but the ground was nearly frozen. Her only hope now was for a passing vehicle to come to her rescue. She began crying out in a desperate plea for help. Help! But the crash had left her far below the roadway, and no one could possibly see her or hear her cries. So I kind of just sat there for a few minutes longer thinking, what am I going to do next? Then miraculously, someone appeared out of the light, a familiar face. It was her father. He just stood there, right there in front of me. He told me not to worry, everything would be all right. And then I, I guess at that point I did black out because it kind of I don't remember anything until I kind of come back to it again. At the same time, Sergeant Stephen Campbell and his children were on a 600-mile drive from North Carolina to Kentucky for a Thanksgiving with his family. It was almost 3 in the morning when Stephen noticed the car getting low on gas. So he left the highway in Lexington, Kentucky, turning onto the Bluegrass Parkway, hoping to find a gas station open. So we're cruising down the, the bluegrass, and uh, at each major intersection, you can see those great big signs with the you know, great big gas signs, but all of them are turned off, and everything's closed. Miles later, with the gauge almost on empty, Stephen was getting very worried. And we started seeing the signs for Elizabethtown. Where is what we're going to get off at anyway? And I know there's 24-hour gas stations there. And I thought, oh boy, yeah, we're going to make it. Everything's going to be great. And then, uh, then it was chugged and. There was no more. You know, I was sitting there trying to think what I wanted to do, whether I wanted to wait till till dawn or, you know, what exactly I wanted to do there. Because it was, I don't know, it was already probably three or four o'clock in the morning by then. Miraculously, Stephen's car had run out of gas only a few feet away from where Pamela's car had gone over the embankment. Now, as he waited in the car, Pamela lay nearby, fighting for her life. With her heart rate slowing dramatically and hypothermia setting in from the cold, Pamela turned to see her father walking away from her. I asked him why he was leaving, why wasn't he staying with me? And he told me that I'd be okay. He said, you're all right now. You don't need me. We're out of gas. We're gonna have to push. 
Stephen decided to push the van to the top of the grade and then roll down to the next exit. When we got outside the van, uh, my son says, you know, did you hear that? Right, 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 right. Did you hear something? I hear, you know, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. Let's just keep pushing, come on. As Stephen and his son continued to push, Pamela's faint cries for help stopped them once again. Help! I thought I did. So I tell everybody to be quiet and I'm listening and I hear, help me, help me. And you can just, just barely make it out. Hey, I heard that. Did you hear something? Concerned, Stephen decided to investigate, telling hey, his sons to stay in the vehicle right? and lock the doors. I'm gonna go check something out, all right? Uncertain of what he would find in the darkness, Stephen cautiously made his way down the slope. When I was going down that hill, there was probably 10,000 things going through my mind. Uh, everything from, you know, there's 10 guys down here with clubs to there's somebody that really needs help and everything in between. Without knowing the danger he might be walking into, Stephen continued down the hill. Hello? And when I get down closer to the car, then I saw it with the, um, shine the flashlight and I see the car. But as he circled the car, oh he was God. shocked to find Pamela pinned right? beneath what the wreckage. Oh my God. The very first thing that came into my mind was she was cut in half. And of course, immediately after that, you know, your, your mind says to you, well, she's not cut in half because she's talking to you. Of course, the next thing was, you know, can I get this thing, can I get this car off of her? Realizing that he couldn't do anything on his own and that Pamela could die at any moment, Stephen ran for help. <sighs> Minutes later, rescue units arrived. They lifted the car off of Pamela and rushed her to a hospital trauma unit. Pamela had cracked her pelvis and broken her ankle. But the most serious concern now was for her legs, as Dr. Abujadi explains. She could have easily lost her legs depending where she was triaged and where was she, she was evaluated early on. After a month in the hospital, Pamela returned home to begin the long rehabilitation process. Ms. Carter impressed me as, as a tough person, as, as a fighter with a strong will. She wanted to live, and she wanted to walk. Three months later, Pamela was back on the job. We will let you know if there's something that has changed. If not, that's all I need. Thank it was an amazing much. recovery, and one that no one could have predicted. To have survived the crash was a miracle in itself, but what happened after the crash that night was truly miraculous. I believe this is a miracle because I laid there for eight hours and someone just out of the blue ran out of gas right where I was at. I would say it was a miracle that we ran out of gas at that spot. The chances are a billion to one. She has a guardian angel or somebody was looking over her to, for that to happen that spot. I, I say it's my dad. I don't know, somebody else might think something else. But my dad was looking out for me.